Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in. I need to change my brake pads inside my Hayes CS Expert mechanical disc brakes. I know this because braking has become noisy the last week or so and I also know this because I keep monitoring the thickness of my brake pads. However, during the last week I wore them down a little excessively and that caused a little bit of damage on the brake rotor. I'll show you what happened and I'll show you what I do with it. I will also show you in this video what's involved in changing the brake pads themselves. I have here brand new fresh out of the package brake pads. I'm going to use these semi-metallic pad compounds because I need pad compounds that work both in dry and wet weather. If you only do dry weather riding and you want to go with organic brake compounds, nicer for the environment, go for it. In this video I'll show you what tools I use, we'll discuss the geometry and fit of components and what's involved. In this entire video I'm not suggesting what you should or shouldn't do. I'm showing and telling you what I do and how it works for me. This is a show and tell, this is not a tutorial, this is not instruction, not school, not engineering, not a lesson, just a show and tell. What I do and how it works for me. What you do is up to you. So brakes are your safety components and equipment and don't play with it if you don't feel good about it or safe about it just please take it to a professional so the first thing that I do is I wash everything and it's taken me about half an hour everything is dried as well so the hubs the, the, the spokes the brake disc aka rotor the caliper the brake pads themselves, the old ones, for clarity, have been washed, so this is not how you find them normally. You find them covered in muck or at least brake dust thickly. This brake dust masks any deficiencies in the brake disc and will interfere with some of your bolts and and um, will interfere with the fit of putting the new components in. So everything, in my opinion, needs to be super clean. So first thing I do is remove the wheel from the frame, from the forks, and with this type of axle, it's done this way. I put the axle somewhere where it doesn't get stepped on, not for not only for being bent inadvertently, but also I don't want to damage the nice fine thread, it's a coarse thread, but nice thread on it. Because the thread engagement is critical in securing the wheel in the frame. So brake disc later. First let's get started with the brake caliper and the pad. I'm going to reposition the camera. Just give me a sec here so you can see inside thereabouts inside the caliper body. I'm going to start with taking out the old brake pads and we'll show you where the brake pad is magnetic. No, the brake pad is made of steel and the brake piston is magnetic so it's they stick together so it's being pulled in place. This is the back side and this is the one this is the side where the pad material wore away. We'll explain a little bit of situation there that caused another situation on the brake rotor. So this is the second one. So they come out with exactly this much effort by just using a tweezer. A tweezer is not any special, just like so, out of a first aid kit or some such thing. So what happened here was, take a look at this pad material here. This one has a notch there, which is normal. That's your wear indicator. The thickness of the pad, this is a backing plate. The brake pad is mounted on a backing plate and it got magnetized a little bit, sorry. And this brake pad thickness shouldn't be thinner than to expose this notch, the wear mark or wear indicator. I went below that wear mark by about a week and this is what happened, this is bad. The rivets, there are four rivets here, 
three of them are glistening the fourth one is still buried this is because the leading brake was rotating this way the wheel was rotating this way this is the leading edge here and the leading edge wears more very simply on a brake pad so you can see the four rivets the, the other side here so there are four of them and you shouldn't wear the brake pads down below the wear mark to expose the rivets because the rivets are made of soft metals and now I had for a, for one hill or two or whatever for a week I had metal on metal contact the metal rivet material on the pads contacted the metal rotor I know it's out of focus I'll get you close ups on it so this metal on metal contact should be avoided there should only be brake pad material contacting the uh, stainless steel brake discs, brake rotors. Okay, here is the other one. Looks the same way. What happened with the, what's wrong with the rivet being exposed is, you can see this groove here. This brake pad is gouged out. So is the brake disc. Because chunks of metal come away from the rivet as well as chunks of pad material is being worn away in normal braking usually that's normal but when the rivets wear of course that's what makes the squeaky brake sounds I knew that it was too much but I didn't expect this groove to happen so chunks of gummy soft metal gets torn out from the rivet and gets dragged around the whole rotor as it does so, it gouged out the rotor a little bit and embedded in, embedded uh, some of the rivet material into the rotor. I'll show you how it looks like and I'll show you what I do with it. So these brake pads are of course trash. I'm gonna get them out of sight and the new pads need to be placed into the caliper. So they go in fairly straightforward manner but you need to do one thing you need a possibly two millimeter I'm gonna post the size of this there is a lock nut here you need to back out this piston so can't show you this uh, lock uh, screw or lock nut there it's a it's a small screw so it needs to be backed out I loosened it so there's you know it takes half a turn with this one so there's nothing there to loosen anymore and this needs to be backed out it's gonna be sounding like this because the thread of the piston and the thread in the caliper do you know get the uh, there like this gets the brake dust into it so there's really nothing you can do about it put the brake pad first into this half of the caliper body and it's gonna kinda wanna stick in there but you can help it with the tweezers or you can help it there now it's neatly in place with a nice and even gap it's fully in place viewing it from above would reveal a slight let me just raise you up a little bit thereabouts it's not really from above but but uh, is good enough for what I want to show you if you rotate the piston forward there you can see now the edge of the new brake pad material material appearing there that's maybe a little too much so back it out a little bit just initially and only for yeah only for initial assembly I want a nice big wide gap if you put the other side in first uh, then this side is not gonna fit in no matter what you do so now the other side doesn't want to go in because you need to loosen one more bolt which is same wrench which is right around there I know you don't see it because I need to get you higher this one here clamping down the cable so when I loosen it uh, this arm this brake arm here is gonna spring or move forward that's fine in this configuration it still doesn't fit because the 
this side of the bed is not backed out far enough now it goes in loosening of the cable is necessary for working at the proper distance here between the two brake pads so I just make sure with this tool that the gap is nice and even and that both brake pads are neatly seated I'll take you off the tripod neatly seated with a nice and even gap between the two of them I know there I'm trying to work around the light there you can see the nice and even gap between them sorry about the self shadow there this is what's being done and this is the nut that was loosened torque specification is coming right out of here from Hayes website mechanical brake installation so here are all your torque specifications there the cable anchor screw needs 60 plus or minus 5 inch pounds of torque whatever in newton meters and that's the that's the bolt that I have loosened over here this one so the brake pads have been installed and working out the distance between them needs the wheel in place with the rotor rotating and from here on you need to make sure that the gap left side sorry once we'll just go with left side because it's left side on the camera on the on your TV screen as you are viewing it okay but it if the bicycle was rotated upside down uh, it's it's still the left side so this distance is needs to be preloaded or preloaded to some degree so that it's just a tenth of a millimeter or so away from the rotating disc and the other side which is static or stationary also needs to be you can see what I'm doing with it rotated forward so that this side is also about a tenth of a millimeter or so away from the rotating brake disc right now I can't put this wrench between the two of them because they are set to be way too close so I'm backing this one out and yeah that's that's about as far as the left side this side goes so I'm kinda done work on it now because I want to show you the brake rotor so setting the torque on this clamp bolt is fairly straightforward and working out the distance is in another video that I have shot previously to which I will include a link here but this is what's involved in changing the brake pad very straightforward work I'm gonna show you the boo-boo on the brake disc aka brake rotor and what I do with it so how do we do this there you can kind of see it in this light and if you don't of course I'll get you I'll get you closer you can see the different texture of the brake disc here and you can see that embedded lump there that's the problem that we have that's one chunk of soft gummy metal that wore away from the brake rotor and that that will be gouging out the new brake pad a condition which I don't want I can show you with don't get a heart attack at this point this is a block plane blade I just want to show you that this is a raised feature that shouldn't be there let me just try to stabilize the picture and I'm sliding the plane edge there you can hear it that I'm hitting it I'm hitting this lump with the edge of this plane okay there so that's a somewhat of a microscopic feature or detail and that needs to be looked you need I need 
you need to look for it to find it so if everything is covered in brake dust you're not gonna find it but you are gonna gouge out your new brake pads so what I do with it is fairly straightforward this is a micro file a very small file and and at this point if you get a heart attack that's I understandable I totally understand it so what I do with that one spot there is I file it down but the brake rotor as it wears out in use is thicker here it has an edge here that a lip here that begins to wear into it that's normal and the edge here is also a little bit higher because where the brake pad is or runs is between here and here so I try to file it down without running the file on the high rim there or the high rim there so something like this would be fine and this amount of filing is exactly how long it takes like five strokes or so now my brake rotor here is instead of gouged out you think it might be scratched and microscopically it probably is but you can see that this lump here that was previously there was gone and and the plane blade glides over it you can also check it with your finger or try to catch your nail with it sorry about the self shadow we are like one inch but this this far away from the camera's lens okay so this is really a somewhat of a microscopic feature but one that will gouge out the new brake pads like I said I don't want that so this is how I deal with this thing how good is this brake rotor if it's or brake disc it's still straight so I have no problems with this its surface is made to wear you can see it is long circular marks in it as it comes into contact with the brake pad and that little bit of scratch that I did was really like you know, like five strokes or whatever I did it in front of your very eyes I'm not concerned about those hairline scratches there that I put there with the corner of the file because the surface of the metal is made to wear anyhow but I don't want a lump protruding out from it one thing that needs to be checked with one more thing with this brake rotor other than flatness and run out so it's not wobbly is its thickness and I want to show you since we are so close to it it says minimum thickness one point 52 millimeters I'll try to there 1.52 thick min that's what it reads 1.52 millimeters all right I'm not going to show you how to use or how to read a vernier caliper but this is what I do because of these ridges that will develop on a brake disc high ridges here and high ridges here I measure this way straddling or not straddling avoiding the high ridge at both places because the calipers jaws come together like so like, like that allowing for me to bypass this problem the high ridges I know you can't really read the numbers on this caliper as is but because I'm holding the jaws together with my hand that's how I take a reading it's 1.7 millimeters so it's fine it's gonna go back on the bicycle but I wanna show you a torque wrench because that's kind of implied that you need a torque wrench for putting everything back together properly torque wrench for this if you need to remove the caliper body torque wrench for those bolts and of course if you remove or do anything with these disc mounting bolts and of course torque wrench for these ones as well the torque specifications are also printed on it it's really shiny and really difficult to read it so I'm just gonna put the wheel back in place 
between the new brake pads where they should fit and they do and I'm gonna put you back in the original position there thereabouts and find my axle which I meticulously saved thereabouts and let's listen to the brakes and the new brake pads they are barely catching on one side I don't know one of the sides so now give me another 10 minutes and the distance and the uh, the piston here will be set so it's not making this contact sound it will be just fine so both the left side and the right side need to be set with the wheel mounted in place like this okay don't spin the wheel with that wrench in the way and of course the lock nut or bolt that's on the underside of this caliper now underside when the bicycle is rotated around normally then it's on the top side so that locks the piston in place so it's gonna be a little fiddling that fiddling is on another video and this has already been 21 minutes and 20 seconds thank you very much for watching